fill up my water jug, I usually do it once a week. So this is one of many water stations that we have uh, due to more uh, water quality in our city. Kern County has a history of uh, violations when it comes to safe drinking water. That is something that scares me and um, scares my community as well. I started. This is the People's Water Board Coalition Water Wednesday webcast for March 2nd, 2022. Welcome, 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 beloved community. We are back again with yet another installment of the People's Water Board Coalition's Water Wednesday's webcast. And today we have the honor and pleasure of meeting with one of our legislators, our state representative, who has always been a water warrior in the fight against clean, accessible, affordable water, and is now in the process of introducing a bill to make water a public trust, State Representative Yusuf Rabi. Thank you so much for being here. And thank you to my co-host as well for joining us, Valerie Jean and our people behind thank the scenes, Lou and Rosalind. Thank you so much. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Nicole, for that introduction. And it is an honor to be here with you today. And Valerie and Lou and uh, Rosalind, thank you all so much for the work that you're doing and uh, staying in this fight. This is so important. Well, you've been in the fight for a long time. I know that uh, you and I have organized things together about around Line 5, shutting down Line 5. And I was really, really excited to hear that you were pushing new legislation um, a, a bill that would make water a public trust and really excited. We're going to jump right into it because it's a short show. You right. want to tell us a, a little bit about what that looks like, what that bill and legislation is? Sure, absolutely. Yeah. So uh, I don't know if, if you, you, you all probably remember a few years ago when uh, Nestle Waters was trying to basically um, increase their uh, uh, bottling operations in northern Michigan. Um, and they've been allowed to unfortunately do that and basically take our groundwater out, bottle it, put a price tag on it, and then sell it back to us and ship it outside of our state to make a profit. Um, and fundamentally, you know, especially when we have folks all across our state that still cannot turn on the tap and get clean, fresh water to drink, that is completely unacceptable that we are allowing a private for-profit company to benefit off of our clean water. Um, and as a side note, Nestle has now spun off uh, and their water bottling operations into another company called Blue Triton. So now you'll hear it as Blue Triton instead of Nestle, but either way, whichever company is doing it, it's wrong. And so essentially uh, they're able to do that right now because our groundwater in the state of Michigan is essentially treated as a private commodity, not as a public good. Mm. And what that ends up meaning uh, as all of uh, all of you on this call and, and those that are watching know, water is is not a commodity. Water flows throughout our system, uh, and it, the same water that you see in the Great Lakes, the same water that you see in our rivers, is the same water that's in our groundwater. It's the same H two O. It's flowing from one source to the, to the next. And so to say that a company can come in and take that water is just as wrong as saying that a company can come in and take our Great Lakes water bottle it and ship it to, you know, Arizona, California, uh, you know, or, or even just put a, a tag on it and sell it back to us. So what my bill does is it says all groundwater in the state of Michigan is no longer going to be treated as a commodity. It will be treated uh, under the public trust doctrine as a public good, just like our Great Lakes have that same level of protection. So should our groundwater, because it is all the same water and that should be used uh, for all of us, for our public good, not just for the benefit of a few private corporations that seek to make money off of it. And in those bottle water companies, they're like literally emptying water or aquifers throughout the yes. nation. And it, you know, yes. it's, it's really alarming. We've been we've been sounding the alarm on the commodification of water for the, at least the last five years. We got a. Uh, um, you know, we, we read a report that came out that said, look, they're about to commodify water. And, you know, and I remember Lila Cavill, I don't know if you've ever met her, but she, she came to a people's water board meeting one day and she was just like the commodification of water is the worst thing that we could ever do to humanity. Like it's literally the worst right. thing. So to have them just emptying out aquifers all over the nation yep. and 
certainly throughout Michigan, you know, um, it's just, it's just a crime against humanity. It is. Well, and it impacts, you know, it impacts our cities, right? Because it impacts people that, that, you know, like, for example, the city of Ann Arbor, we draw our water from uh, the Huron River, but we also draw our, our water from aquifers. And so if there's private companies competing for that same water, that impacts my residents, it impacts residents in cities throughout the state. And of course, it impacts our rural residents who are living off of well water, who depend on that well water for, you know, everything from washing their dishes to showering to drinking. And um, if, if these companies are taking that water, that's less for these, uh, you know, for farming communities, for rural residents, that they don't have that water to be able to use themselves. Absolutely. I completely agree. And I know um, I've actually had a, I guess, skirmish with Nestle during the hearings with the MPSC, which is, um, or it was uh, the MDEQ, it's now EGLE. And right. um, I remember them using the argument that, oh, farmers use our water. And, I'm, and I was thinking, but logically water that a farmer uses to water his crops goes back into the ground and back into the aquifer. Right. So you bottle it, you're taking it away and you're not replenishing it. You can't make that comparison. Do you find Absolutely. that a lot of these corporations use that, that uh, excuse to justify their behavior? And I'm so glad you brought that up, Nicole, because, um, you know, what we see is there is a lot of fear mongering with farmers and farming communities that, hey, you know, they're they're trying to make, uh, you know, water in the public trust that's going to impact farming practices. Um, it's really not because at the end of the day, uh, as you just eloquently said, you know, we're actually trying to protect farming communities, farmers and rural residents who depend on well water for irrigation, for their crops, for, for, for drinking, for showering, for all those things. And, uh, and if we allow companies like Nestle to come in, take our water, put a price on it, that is less water that is then available for our farming communities to use to grow the crops that they depend on. So you're absolutely spot on with that. Um, and just if I could too, that, so this bill is gonna be paired uh, with some other pieces of legislation that are also important that, uh, that, we, uh, that we're gonna have some other representatives introduce. We have uh, Representative Padma Kupa that's gonna introduce a resolution ar around uh, World Water Day, um, along, with, uh, along with my bill that I just talked about. Uh, we have Representative Hood who's gonna represent, uh, who's going to introduce the bill on closing the uh, loophole in the Great Lakes Compact. Right now, the Great Lakes Compact protects all the water in the Great Lakes Basin from essentially uh, if like if Arizona or California wanted to bring a pipe, hook it up to Lake Superior and pipe water out, that's banned under the Great Lakes Compact. That's currently not allowed. But if a company, not, company like Nestle wants to bottle all that same amount of water up into uh, containers that are five liters or less, that's what the law says, then they can do it in an unlimited fashion. And so Hood's bill just says, nope, you can't do that. You can't, that, that is a loophole that should not exist that you know, allows for Nestle to do that. So we're gonna close that loophole. And then the fourth bill is gonna be introduced by Representative Kohutsky. And that's gonna basically give our state um, some teeth to be able to enforce both the, uh, you know, some of the public trust provisions that we just talked about. So this is a package that I've been working on with these other legislators. And we've got a good crew uh, that's come together around this to help push it. That's wonderful that you mentioned that because next week we have Representative Fahutsky on and we're nice. working with Representatives Hood and Koopa on the show as well. Excellent, that's good to hear. <laughs> uh, I'm, it's gonna be great to get a full overview of the water packages being, um, uh, being introduced um, so people can really start talking about them and really start pushing for them so that you're not just on the, you know, on, <laughs> on this floor of the House of Representatives pushing, but we're pushing for it in all the ways that we can by calling our legislators and the, all of the people. So it's yeah, really right important on. having those conversations, you know? Yeah, and what we, we, and, and we need that, Valerie. We need all the help we can get, so thank you. Thank yeah. you. What do you think this will mean for residents? What, what, what will, as far as like water as a public trust, what will it mean for residents? Yeah, it means it means more of our water in the state of Michigan. Our clean water uh, is available for for you and I to 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 drink, and it's uh, and it's we're taking money or we're taking water that would have been converted into profits by some of these companies like Nestle, and we're saying no, this this is not 
it's not okay for companies to be able to do this. This is water that should be um, used by the people, the 10 million residents of the state of Michigan. It is our water and it should be held in, in public trust for all of us. Um, and so what will it mean for, for you know, uh, average residents? The only thing that I can think is that it will be a benefit because there will be more clean water available. And unfortunately, as we're seeing more and more, um, you know, uh, uh, of our aquifers getting polluted, which is another thing that I've been working on with trying to get polluter pay laws passed to say, we can't just keep, you know, dumping pollution in these aquifers and then just leaving them there because every time we do that, that's, you know, we're writing off one other area Um and impacting our rural residents, impacting our farmers, impacting our cities that are seeking to get clean water. And so, but, but unfortunately that trend is still continuing. So as we continue to see that happening, you know, we need all the clean water we can get so that our residents can drink um, and they can have affordable water um, that doesn't cost, you know, uh, an expensive amount, like, like what you, when you get bottled water, you should be able to get um, affordable, clean water for all residents in the state of Michigan. And by putting our groundwater in the public trust, uh, it will help to achieve that goal. You know, Nestle and the corporations don't understand when they do that, everything's connected. All of the tributaries throughout Michigan, the soil, the air, everything's connected. So when they do stuff like that, it, it affects everybody, even them. It affects even them. You know, yeah. corp the, the uh, CEO of Nestle came out a few years ago and very publicly said, you know, water isn't a human right. You don't have a right to water. It's like this yeah. blatant, um, oh, oh, you have completely lost your whole, your whole mind and you don't yeah. care anything about people. And so, you know, that there's, they'll, they'll take it until it's gone. They'll poison it till it's, until yeah. it's all poisoned. They don't think they don't care if we have it. They don't think that it's a human right to have it. And it's just always been so disturbing to me. So, well, um, so legislation being pushed is a must yeah. because they will not act on a moral conscience, not at Absolutely. all. Yeah, that's that's right on, Valerie. It's and it's and it speaks to their mindset, right? As a corporation, that it's to them, it's not a human right because you got to pay for it, right? You got to make people pay, and they want to profit, and that's what it's about for them. It's about money in their pockets and in the pockets of their investors. And for us, it's about people surviving, living, drinking right. water, thriving as human beings. It's about the human aspect. So, you know, I mean, and, and they, you're right, they, they will exploit all of our resources until there isn't a drop left, if it means that they get money in their pockets. And by the way, the wealthy, they'll be fine. They can find, you know, they'll have exclusive rights to their own little private, you know, water sources. Um, mm -hmm. It's the rest of us that are going to suffer if we don't protect our water from these uh, extremely greedy corporations that are coming after our water resources. Absolutely. I completely agree with that. Although most of them look like they don't drink much water anyway, but <laughs> that could be you know, part of the issue of why they don't connect to water. Mm -mm. It's just, it's just bizarre that they, that um, folks think that they, they don't understand everything's connected. My thinking behind that is if you destroy our water sources, sadly, and not to be morose, people will die. So yes. you life and death situation. It is when they were shutting off mass water people here in Detroit. Your water. People got very very sick because they didn't have access to water. It is a life and death situation, and it it's, especially in a pandemic, it's a life and death situation that people have access to clean, affordable water. And and shoot the the rural areas, especially farmers, they're already suffering in so many ways. Yeah. Um, not having access to water would would tank some of these th would tank these farms, and you oh, know absolutely. then you've got a problem in our food supply chain and all of these things. Everything is very very much connected. Um, yeah, it has a cascading effect into our food supply, and I'm glad that you mentioned that, both from a farming perspective, but also from you know I know a lot of Michiganders are you know uh, anglers, hunters, you know, and and they go out in our in our in our uh, natural streams, rivers, lakes, wetlands. And everything from duck hunting to fishing, all that is impacted by the health of our aquifers in the state of Michigan. If Nestle is, you know, studies actually show that if Nestle was allowed to continue to draw all that water, um, you know, that we would actually lose uh, wetlands, we would lose, you know, uh, river, river levels and, and stream levels would go down. And what, what all the people on this call and, you know, know already is that 
even a small change in, in, in river levels can have a dramatic impact on fish populations and on the, and on the little critters that live, that the live in the Creek that the, that the fish depend on. This impacts uh, all of us in the state of Michigan, whether you are a farmer, whether you live in a city, whether you live in a rural area, whether you are, are into hunting and fishing, whether you even maybe um, depend on that for your food source, um, this impacts all of us. And, and so we need our groundwater to be in the public trust for the sake of all of, all of our uh, future. Absolutely. Yeah, and folks don't have to look any further than what happened in California either. They they let yep. them bottled water companies walk in and they, they already didn't have enough water. Now half the state on fire for yep. months out of the year because they didn't have, it's really because of that, because they, they absolutely drained their aquifers and things like that. It's just the saddest thing in the world yeah. to see, but you don't have to look any further to see what happens when that, when, when they're allowed to just, you know, uh, uh, be walk around unregulated and do what they want. It's just unbelievable. Do you feel like, um, what do you feel like voters and people, you know, what do you feel like community can do to really push for this? Yeah, well, we're going to need um, everybody's voice as part of this. This is going to be a big group effort. We've been trying to push this legislation actually for uh, for several years now. And what we're getting is a lot of resistance, as we said, from, you know, corporations like Nestle that want to continue to profit. Well, now it's called, uh, you know, Blue, uh, Blue Triton, but corporations like that that are trying to profit off of our, you know, resources, um, you know, they're going to be pushing hard against legislation like this. They're already starting. Um, I've already gotten some communications, um, you know, from them to that effect. And so we need everybody organized, mobilized, ready to ready to help push this. Um, and what we're going to need is folks to call their representatives um, and their senators and really say, hey, we need this legislation to pass. And I mean, when I say that, I mean, um, not just Democrats. We need people to call Democrats, Republicans uh, from both sides of the aisle, uh, from both chambers, um, and even if you live in an area, you know, say you live in an area where your representative or senator is already sympathetic, already supportive. Um, what I always tell people is you have friends, you have relatives that live across the state, that live in other districts, encourage them, call them, ask them, please call your representative, please call your senator. You can help with this too. Use your networks to help leverage and amplify your voice so that we can all, um, you know, get something like this passed. Um, and this is going to be a, a struggle that that may may take even longer than this. But um, if we're all in it together and we're all pushing hard, I think we can we can be successful because, frankly, because justice is on our side. Uh, and what is we we are doing what is right here, um, and what Nestle is doing is is fundamentally to its core rotten and wrong. And and we can we can overcome. It. I really do believe that. I think so too. You know that's. Um... Yeah, we just got to keep pushing and we've got to gather. We've got to have these conversations, got to have them with our friends. Also, we'll be putting stuff out. Uh, people can pay attention here to the at the People's Water Board um, uh, social media pages and on our website. We're going to be pushing for it to please. We want you to you know send us all of those things and we'll pay attention to your social media so we can share out your stuff, too. And it's just important that people go through and they learn as much as they can, you know. Absolutely. That's, yeah, um, I, I really I feel hopeful that uh, that we'll be able to pass this, that you all will be able to pass this and that we'll be able to have your back on it. Um, and I'm hoping that the other legislations, as we learn more about them, this, uh, the other th bills being pushed in the in the next few weeks, that folks can really just like figure out a real strategic plan to get them to get all of them pushed. Uh, we yep. need that. Yeah, yeah and we're very really hopeful and very positive feeling because we have representatives like you and representative Cooper and Hood and Pahutsky that are pushing and fighting for this. It's good to know that our vote actually mattered at one point in time when we voted all of you into office. So we do appreciate all the hard work that you're doing as well. Well, thank you, Nicole. I appreciate that. And just to emphasize that point, my first election back in 2010, I only won that election by one vote. So that just goes to show you that every vote does matter and it does make an impact and it does make a difference. And I wouldn't be where I am today, you know, if, 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 if we didn't believe that every vote does make a difference. So, so that, 
votes have, you know, elections matter. Elections have consequences. We need people to stay involved, to stay engaged. And we would love to have your help with this. Uh, we don't have a bill number yet uh, because we haven't introduced it. But once we do, we'll make sure to share it with you and share with you which committee you on to so that you can help us advocate in that way. Absolutely. That's great. The, um, I really think that uh, we, in the in the coming months and certainly within as we're as the pandemic's kind of rounding out, we hope that's the hope that the pandemic is rounding out that um, that as and as we push for these bills and they get implemented and uh, that you know, people will really be able to see some kind of relief. People are really struggling. It's certainly around water, um, paying their water bills, having access to water. So, uh, and, and through the pandemic, it's, it, we found that people just, they couldn't afford their bills. They couldn't afford to make their ends meet. Yeah. So um, having, having things in place is just gonna be really, really important. We're gonna be pushing here in Detroit for uh, the People's, Wa People's Water Board Water Affordability Plan. I don't know if I've ever sent it to you, Representative Robbie, but I will if I haven't. If you haven't seen it, you should. Yeah, um, please. But, I don't think I've seen it yet. Yeah, I'll send it to you. But we've been really pushing for that here in Detroit. It's just so uh, so important to uh, for folks to to see that, and you know, because um, at we uh, we're in a moratorium until the end of December uh, of a water shutoff moratorium. So by the end of this year, we have to have something in place or people are really, really going to be in, in trouble here in Detroit and around Michigan. Yeah, yes. well, yeah, go ahead, Nicole. I'm sorry. Well, no, I'm just saying definitely I completely concur with what she's saying. Yeah, and I think, you know, that's kind of what I was saying earlier, too, of like this, you know, the issue of water affordability and making sure that, you know, uh, that we're recognizing that water is essential, that every home, you know, regardless of abilities to pay, should be uh, have access to water, right? And that that ties in directly with with the issues that we're talking about here around public trust, and but it's also an issue that we need to be working on in uh, you know in areas that are covered by the Great Lakes Water Authority and beyond. I mean, even in places like Ann Arbor and other you know other parts of the state that have you know water authorities, you know, we need to be doing this on a statewide level to make sure that everybody has has access to you know clean water. Um, and it's unacceptable, you know, that we still, again, that we still live in a state where people can't turn on the tap in some areas and get clean, uh, clean water that comes out. That's one issue. But then there's the affordability piece, you know, and folks, you know, in Flint, people were paying on an, they were paying their water bills for poison water, you know, and I mean, there needs yeah. to be, uh, you know, there has been inadequate um, sort of like restitution in this in the city of uh, Flint to make sure that you know, we're, we're restoring people uh, for those bills that they paid that where they were, you know, paying for uh, bad water, you know, places like uh, Benton Harbor, places even like the city of Detroit, where this is happening, you know, on, on, a, on a daily basis. And, and we're still uh, we're still in that position. We need to pass strong, uh, strong, uh, frankly, budget bills in the state of Michigan to get some of these federal dollars out the door. This is another thing I've been advocating for so that we can get uh, pipes replaced in our cities. Um, those, those, there are still uh, lead pipes in many of our communities. There are still, uh, you know, problems that we need to that we need to solve there. And the burden cannot and should not be on municipalities uh, always, because our cities have been put in a absolute terrible position where the state has stopped funding them, um, stopped giving them adequate resources, and said, "Well, you're on your own now. Good luck." And then when they go bankrupt, they send in an emergency manager who comes in and, and screws everything up like they did in Flint, you know, like they did in, in Detroit and a number of other places and screws everything up, sells off public assets, hobbles the ability of the city to survive even when it's out of bankruptcy. Um, and yet the state still hasn't solved that problem of sending revenue to cities. Um, so the least we can do as a state is sending some of the federal dollars that we're getting anyways to cities to be able to uh, help them to replace their lead service lines, you know, and, and water systems so that we have, you know, again, clean water that can start flowing to people's taps once again. You know, that's absolutely, that's, I mean, that we've been talking about the American Rescue Plan dollars and that that's where they have to go. Um, you know, like we're, otherwise we're in a couple of years, we're, we're already in a serious situation with- uh, It's gonna get having, worse. Yeah, it's only yeah. gonna get worse if we don't get those pipes right. replaced. So, because we can't put the burden of the cost onto the community. They already can't. 
like like it was a it was preposterous when I heard that Flint's water rates had went up, but yet these people are still paying for water that they can't drink because it's poison. Right. You know, and then you, you raise the rates on the water that they can't utilize. Yeah. Oh, they were paying some of the highest bills in the nation for water that was killing them. Seriously. Yes, exactly. Representative Robbie, do you have you seen any uh, other bills across the nation pushed as water as a public trust for water to be a, a public trust legislation? Have you seen any other legislation any anywhere else across the nation? That's a great question. I, you know, I've heard a number of uh, folks talking about it in other states, but I have not seen a bill introduced yet. Um, this this term, at least. Uh, and, and like I, I don't know if I mentioned this before, but this is a bill that I've introduced now, uh, both terms that I've served already in office. So this is something I've been continuing to push um, every opportunity that I have. This is one of our core issues, I think, in the state of Michigan is our water and making sure that we have you know, access to water. But in terms of other states, yeah, I think there's been conversations. I don't know if anything concrete has been introduced yet, um, but this is something that is an increasing issue as we see you know, droughts out West. I think Western states, as you had said earlier, um, I, I don't know, I remember if it was Valerie or Nicole that said, you know, Western states are depleting their water resources and they're now starting to realize, oh shoot, we should have been more uh, protective of stewarding our resources. And we can do that here in Michigan before it's too late. Um, it may be too late for some of these other states, but you know, uh, we can step up and do something now. And frankly, we're going to have more pressure than we've ever had before to uh, to basically divert our water to some of these other places. And and my thing is, that's not that's not okay from an ecological perspective. It's not okay from a from a social equity and justice perspective. Uh, but I mean, if Californians want to move to Michigan. Uh, they're welcome. We've got, uh, you know, they, they can move here. Arizonans can move here to be in the Great Lakes Basin, but, um, you know, diverting our water to those areas so that they can continue to, frankly, exploit water resources at the rate that they are is not acceptable and it's not sustainable. It's not good for the environment. It's not good for people. Mm-mm. No. And as you know, if the Great Lakes even goes down a little bit, because we didn't get the snowfall we're supposed to get, right? It affects the whole the whole climate here in Michigan. Yep. Um, but we just don't even get enough snowfall. When you think that- about Michigan having 21% of the world's fresh water, anything that damages our our water system affects the entire world. That's right. It does. It does. Really Everything's connected. Think of it that way. Mm-hmm. Everything's connected. That's a perfect way to end, Nicole. <laughs> uh, how everything's connected. Um, thank you, Representative Robbie, not just for this legislation, but uh, for uh, your longtime work on protecting water and um, and not just as a public trust, but protecting the Great Lakes. Uh, we appreciate you for that. And it's so nice to have you on. And I really hope that we can have you on and we can celebrate uh, this bill getting yes. pushed and um, or getting passed and also line five being shut down. I, I say yep. that... Uh, and we, we should, yeah. I, I'm hoping to have a celebration show on both of those. Uh, it would we be need great. something to celebrate. Be awesome. we need something to celebrate. <laughs> that's right. Yes, Absolutely. that's right. And we are going to. This, I can already see it. It's in cards. <laughs> well, thank you both again for having me on here. This uh, has been thank you for taking the time. Thank you, Nicole. Appreciate you. Thank you, Valerie. This has been wonderful. And like I said, this is a fight that we're all in. Let's stay in it. This, this is a fight that's worthwhile. It is a fight for justice. It is a fight for our earth. It is a fight for ourselves. It is a fight for our people. And it is a fight that we are going to win. So stay in it. Stay in it that's with me. We're all in this together. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Until next time, my friends, try to take care of each other and try to stay afloat. Bye. <laughs>